So today we're going to be just talking about our time in Prague College, I guess. And then we're going to be answering some questions. Yeah, we should present each other. I'm trying to see it here and it's so weird. Ah, you're right. watching it at the same time. On my phone, yeah, just trying to check. All right, so Nicholas, you want to introduce yourself? All right, all right. Uh, my name is Tell Nick. us about you. Hi everyone, uh, I'm a, a business student. Um, I'm doing right now the international business and finance, international finance and business accounting BA uh, at Prague College. I'm doing it part time now. And I uh, just finished my second year, so I'm already in my last one. You're already on your last one? Yeah, I just started the last semester. <laughs> so oh. I give it to you, uh, Adri. Well, hi, uh, I'm Adriana, or Adri for short. I'm a graphic design student. I, I just started my last year, um, and I'm also working as a freelance designer right now, and that's me. Casey? <laughs> okay, yeah, my name is Ksenia, or Casey. Uh, I'm studying creative media production, and I'm in my second year now. Just started my third semester. And yeah, I've been in Prague for one year. I'm doing some freelance work sometimes, did the internship during the summer. So, yeah. Awesome. awesome. Great. So, I was thinking that we could probably answer some general questions. What do you think if I, if I ask the questions and then we can just answer each, each of us? Perfect. All right. So maybe we can go to the first question. Let me open it. And that is, uh, how uh, has studying in Prague met your expectations? Oh, yeah, because for the people who are joining us, um, some of the questions were sent to the school's email. So we have some questions already, but you can send your questions, I think, in the in the comments um, of the Facebook Live, I believe. And then yeah. um, this thing is kind of like a couple of seconds behind, so we'll have to wait. But yeah, go ahead and ask your questions. But uh, has Prague met your expectations? Is that the question? That's it. Yeah. In my case, um, my story is a little funny because I came to Prague when I was eight, um, just for Easter holidays. So I fell in love with the city. Is I'm originally from Costa Rica, so then like you know it was a completely different thing from what I was used to. And I was like, oh, I would love to live here. So when I was looking for universities and I found Prague College, I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna get to live there. It's so cool. Um, so I, I my expectations were really really high. And eventually, like in these past two years, I feel like it's met all my expectations and more because I didn't expect to, for it to be so cheap for me to be able to travel so much. And like, obviously I was excited to meet people, but I've met some really awesome people. And I've had a lot of opportunities that I feel like I would have not had if I had stayed back in Costa Rica or if I had stayed where I was living in Kenya at the time. So I don't think I would have gotten the same opportunities. So that's, that's me. So how about you guys? In my case, in my case, actually Prague exceeded my expectations in every way possible. And unlike Adri, I had zero expectation, expectations of Prague. I don't know why, because like I moved to Prague, not because of Prague, but because of Prague College, because I found it. I loved the program and I was like, okay, well, it's in Prague, so I have to go to Prague. But I did not want to go here at the beginning. I don't know why. And then I came here with zero expectations. And now I'm absolutely in love with Prague. Like, and I feel like the more time I spend here, the more I love it. And yeah, like, I'm just walking around Prague every single day. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so happy and so grateful to live here. Because it's like a I movie. Also, like you walk down. It's, it's like, like a like movie. And because, like, because I come from Russia, from Moscow, uh it was like i for some reason i thought that it prague will not be that different from moscow that you know like mentality of people will be very similar like in general everything will be very similar but it's actually so different and i was so surprised when i came here and i was so surprised like how amazing the public transport is like how nice people are like for me personally like from my experience and yeah i'm completely in love with prague what about you, Nicholas? Well, uh, I did an exchange before I came to Prague College. So I kind of already knew what was I coming for. 
but I have to say that also I lived in a smaller city in the Czech Republic, not really Prague, but yeah, it was really, really great. Uh, what's interesting about here is that uh, you never really get to know the whole city. There's always some hidden gem, like uh, secret coffee places, secret, I don't know, skater places. There's everything. I, like uh, sometimes I just go to some place and I say, how, how do I don't know this place? Like uh, I have been living here two years and I've never been here. How's that possible? <laughs> That happened to me just recently because I live in Prague 10. So like going to the other Prague's like Prague 7 and Prague 5 is like every once in a while. And for one of my school projects right now, we're doing a whole magazine on Holeshavice, so Prague 7. And we had to like go there and do the like a tour and then like research to be able to interview people and stuff. And I was like, this part is so cool. And I've never been here to all these places. And yeah, so now I'm, I'm obsessed with Holeshavice now. <laughs> Yeah, and to me personally, Prague feels so cozy in a sense that, you know, like in one year you can really get to know it and feel comfortable here, feel like home. And it feels like, you know, like you meet so many people and because Prague is kind of small. So like, you know, when you meet a new person, like you have some mutual friends already and it makes it feel like it's one big community. But at the same time, there are so many things happening in Prague all the time. And it's just sometimes it's just crazy. Like you want to go to so many events. And yeah, I loved it. All right. Alrighty, next question. We have okay. a question from the chat. Or do you yeah, want we have various from the chat. Do you guys want to read those? About yeah. the residents. Is there residence on campus for international students? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's a funny story. My sister, um, my older sister, she was in like, a really big campus school so when my family came to drop me off they went to visit the school with me and we were all like this is so small because <laughs> the school in itself is very tiny um, we have one building with like three floors and there's like um, the business the arts and then the fine arts and stuff like that they're divided very weirdly um, and then we have another building for like the art studios but the campus itself is just one building because it's not a campus school practically it's a city school so you kind of just you know travel around and you get the experience of the city more so there are no um residences in the campus but we do have residences for students um, i was actually in one of them called botich and they were really nice like the the place was really cool um the building itself was in an area that was very local and very calm compared to other ones. And it was more centric than I think the one um, Casey was in. So I really liked it. <laughs> and the people there were really cool as well. So yeah, I, I was, um, I, yeah, I was in rooms five. It's located in Prague five, which is a little bit not very close to the center. It's by Metro, maybe like 20, 30 minutes to the center. But the good thing is like the metro was right next to the dorm, like four minute walk. So that was a good thing. And another good thing was that like the dorm was in a very quiet, like family neighborhood. So it's, you know, like it's super chill, super quiet, super safe. And there were like, you know, a few big supermarkets around, like everything was super close. And there was a huge park right next to the dorm with the lake, it, like, it's so beautiful. I used to walk there all the time. And yeah, and I lived there from September to April, and then I moved to an apartment. But the dorm itself, it's very modern. Like it's recently renovated. Yeah, yeah like it looks, it looks amazing, it looks great. And yeah, I was living in a double room. I was sharing it with another girl not from Prague College, she went to, I think, Charles University or something like this. So, yeah, that is okay. I definitely prefer living in an apartment more because I have, like, my own space. But yeah. the dorms the dorms are quite nice. And you also get, like, to be with other students that are most probably in your year. Because I remember um, the first day that I was in my dorms, I just, cause you had to share the kitchen with the whole floor. And so I went to like, I was super scared. I didn't know how to use the kitchen. I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? And I went there and there was this group of girls and they're like, hi, how are you? I was like, hello. And, um, and one of them, like, I think two of them actually um, 
eventually were in my class. So we, the next day we like walked together to school. I was like, okay, cool. Cause it's like random people they just find in the kitchen. So yeah, and now we're still friends. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't actually live in any uh, uh, accommodation, in, in any accommodation, sorry. Oh, you missed Residence, a certain residence. I, I was living in, in an apartment or, or a room for from day one. So I wouldn't know. <laughs> Maybe next question. <laughs> yeah. The other one says, uh, hi, greetings. How can I go via admissions to Prague University or Prague College? Um, I guess you can email the admissions yeah. team. Admissions yeah, at prockcollege.cz. Uh, uh, you, you can easily find the admissions email there, and and they are super helpful. I I would say that no other admissions has ever like uh, helped me so so well like like uh, them. So kudos to Natasha, uh, the, the Alexa. Uh, yeah, all, all of the admission team. Uh, oh, they yeah. they are doing a really good job. <laughs> And shout out to student services as well. We love you guys. I, I don't know what I would do without Rye and um, everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there is another question. What do you put in the portfolio for BA ONS? Yeah, I actually hmm. don't understand this question. Yeah, it if you mean if you mean when you're applying for the program, I guess. If you mean that, like for, for creative media production, I did not have to provide any portfolio. I guess it's different for graphic design. For the portfolio, I actually get this question asked on Instagram a lot because a lot of like people message me on Instagram because um, they find me through the school, I guess. And I've actually helped a couple of people send in their portfolios. I looked through them and I was like, oh, you know, you could change these and stuff just because I know the people that are reviewing the portfolios and I know what they like, mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Sean. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so what I would say is just find things that you like to online. I just found like inspiration, like graphic design inspiration on Pinterest. And then I just copied it to be honest, <laughs> not gonna lie. That's what I did because I had no real actual experience in graphic design. I had done art and like sculptures and like all of these different things, but I knew that fine art was something that I didn't want to get into. Um, so I just went online and found posters and then I did like a book cover and a website and stuff. And they were all like personal projects that I just put in there. Um, so it, don't, don't put too much pressure on yourself because obviously they know that you're coming in to, to learn, but yeah, just be true to yourself. Oh, well, the girl that I reviewed her portfolio was a really big, uh, Beba Rexa, BB Rexa fan. So most of her artwork was, um, from like BB Rex's fan account stuff. So that was pretty cool. All right. So are there any, any more questions? Are there in Facebook? Do I need to take an international English exam if I'm doing IBDP English HL? <laughs> um, do you guys have anything to add to that? Do you guys know what IBDP is? No, no. Is it? Uh, no. I don't. Okay. <laughs> so I don't want to answer all the questions, but I know what IB is. I did IB, um, the diploma program, and I took English HL, English A HL, and I didn't have to take any English exams. And that's a, another question that was asked before that maybe you guys could talk about because I didn't have to do an English exam, um, mostly because English is my native language. Yeah, no, like my first language. Yeah. How about you guys? Did you guys have to do English exams? Yes. Uh, I, I had to do TOEFL. Go. What? <laughs> go, go. I did a TOEFL test there. It's oh. a, an international test. So there are many options. So uh, that was the, not the easier, but like uh, the one I knew uh, I could take uh, in Bolivia. So there uh, I took the TOEFL. Uh, it took me some preparation, but it was fine, I would say. Yeah, I like I never studied in English before and I come from Russia so I had so I had to take the test as well and I also took TOEFL but you don't have to take TOEFL there is different options like you can take IELTS as well you can I think you can take Cambridge exam so on the on Pro College website there is like a list of exams that you can take and also I think there is an option to take a test in Pro College directly Maybe not now because of traveling restrictions, but there was such an opportunity. And for TOEFL, yeah, it just took me like over the summer. I was just preparing for it on my own. And then I did it and it was fine. 
fast. Yeah. <laughs> You're still there. Um, and that leads us to another question, actually, I think. I don't have them here, but it was, um, how is it to have classes in English? Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, uh, I was a little scared at the beginning, because mainly because of the uh, reports and all the essays and so on, because uh, I, I've never really uh, studied in English before, just like Casey. And so I never really had uh, to write academic papers in English. So that was a challenge, but usually in the first semester, you get one extra class in which you review all the, all the formats, how to write uh, good academic essays, how to reference them and all of that. So uh, I would say from, first, from semester one, they prepare you good for that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like, as I said, I never studied in English before. So I was definitely worried because I come from like a town and family where nobody speaks English. So before coming to Prague, I never even had like speaking experience with anyone whatsoever. You're so good. And I was like, when I came, I was the first few days when we had like the welcome week, I was super scared because it was so new to me. I never spoke English in my life before, basically. And especially with so many people from many different countries. Uh, so it, the first few days I was a little bit worried, but then I got used to it super fast. And uh, with like these classes, I was also a little bit worried, uh, but all my teachers, lecturers, classmates were so supportive and very helpful. So I wasn't scared of making a mistake. I knew that, you know, everyone understands and it's okay. And then, I don't know, it took me maybe like one week of classes to completely get used to speaking English. And then I was, you know, confident and I felt comfortable with writing like academic papers. I also I was struggling with it a little bit because yeah, I've never done it before in my life in English. Like I never wrote essays in English but we did have uh, study communication skills class, which helped a lot. And, uh, and also, yeah, like my first essays that I wrote was very stressful for me because I was freaking out. But my lecturers and classmates were so helpful. They helped me out a lot. And then, you know, like the next essays and reports, I felt much more comfortable and study communication skills class helped a lot. So it's just practice and you'll get used to just don't worry, don't be afraid, it's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I can confirm that actually, like uh, uh, now my assignments take half the time that they took the, the, uh, the first ones. <laughs> I, I probably had to change three drafts like completely. Because yeah, it was like, <laughs> totally same. <laughs> yeah. We're actually about to start writing our thesis this semester. Oh, and oh my most God. Of my classmates, <laughs> yeah, most of my classmates have never, well, not most of them, but a lot of them have never written essays in English um, because or any 5,000 word essay at all um, because most of them come from abroad and from different educational backgrounds so like for me for example I did IB so I have written a kind of a thesis paper um, before so I have some idea but some people don't so um, right now the first couple of weeks are all about uh, leveling all of us so we all have the same um, advantage, I guess. So now we're doing all the referencing and learning how to, you know, uh, do the conclusions and the intros and the thesis statements. So it's like, you know, they help us a lot uh, to kind of get balanced out. Uh, the next question is, how long does the visa take for processing? It really depends on your country, I think. Yeah, it really it depends. depends. I actually, uh, <laughs> I have dual nationality from Bolivia and Spain, so I didn't have to do the visa, so I wouldn't know. Lucky. <laughs> for you, Casey? For me, oh my God, when I was doing it for the first time, like before my first year, when I was still in Moscow, it took... It took quite a while because, you know, like you have to book your appointment first and then you have to book another appointment for another appointment. Uh, yeah, so it took a while, but just make sure to do everything on time. Just, you know, really follow the deadlines, do everything in advance because it will it will help you save your nerves. <laughs> but, me, you know, yeah. like here in Prague, when I was doing it this year, it was much easier. 
healing. Lucky. Because yeah, I just like I just booked an appointment, got all my documents. By the time when their people were super nice, they, they speak English and they help you a lot. And even even if you mess something up, like you mess up one paper, they're super nice. They're like, yeah, like just redo it and come back and that's okay. Just don't like don't be late and don't forget your appointments. That's the only thing, the most important one. In my case, I did my first visa in Kenya, but as obviously a Costa Rican citizen. So I had to get papers from Costa Rica flown into Kenya and then like they, they were wrong. So I had to get, get them again. So it was a whole really long, expensive process. But I think if you're doing it from your own country, I think it's a lot easier. Um, but still, you have to, you know, go to embassy appointments a lot. And then once here, my for, to get my biometric card, which is like my temporary residency, I think it's called, um, it took a long time because they weren't accepting my insurance. So it like I my visa expired in September and I had to like I didn't have a visa until February because of that. So it was very confusing. And Nelly was the one who went with me and helped me and everything. So again, shout out to student services for making our lives a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, Nelly saved my life <laughs> so many times. Uh, another question. This this is for Casey. Casey, how do you like to create creative media production? She's this person's considering the course. I love it. It's uh, it's very practical. It's extremely practical. Like every single assignment that we have is like usually an actual project that we're working on. And so I love that a lot. And um, yeah, we have so many different classes and we cover different aspects of filmmaking, which is amazing because when I started my program in the first year, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. I was like, yeah, I want to do something with like media film, but I did not know what exactly. And then in the first semester, when we were working on different projects and I, you know, I tried myself on pre-production, I did some camera work, I tried some editing, tried like some script writing. So I tried like all the aspects. And then I realized that like camera is my favorite thing to do and that I love cinematography. And then in my future projects, because I already knew what I want to focus on, I could I was actually allowed to focus on cinematography, for example. And now we are working on a group project. And because we all like different things, we have like different roles within the projects. And yeah, that's great. That's amazing. I met so many amazing people because of my lectures, because like they have connections with so many like artists around Prague. And that's just amazing how many cool people I met and how many cool people I got to work with like with so many artists and yeah that's so cool the other question is uh did you do the foundation diploma for art and design for digital you didn't right me no no yeah what I what I know from foundation I didn't take the foundation but I do know a lot of people who have um it's really for people that kind of don't, first of all, don't have a portfolio or haven't, don't have any background in arts or don't feel um, like they know enough about like Photoshop and InDesign and like layouts and stuff, because that's practically what they teach you, like the Photoshop aspects and the fine arts. And so they give you like a whole scope of all the arts. And then at the end you choose like, do you want to stay in, like, do you want to do graphic design? Do you want to do fine art? Do you want to do creative media? Do you want to do something completely different? I know people that only do foundation just because they want to. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like they don't, they can just go from there. So yeah, foundation I think works if, if you're kind of like, not sure but you still want to do something with your life so <laughs> I was kind of sure I already had done IB um, then more questions um, is there an entry exam or do we directly go for interviews well it depends I think there's an application there's not an actual test but then uh, from the application they either tell you uh, if you pass the interview or not uh, I, I, I'm not sure what happened if they don't accept you. <laughs> Can't relate. <laughs> Kidding. Um, yeah, I, for me, they, I send in my application and my portfolio and then I got an interview and then a couple of days, I think it was even that day, I got the email and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to Prague. 
You know what mm-hmm. happened to me actually when I when I I was supposed to have an interview and it was uh, I think three or four a.m. in Bolivia uh, the time so I uh, I did not figure the time correctly because uh, I didn't account for the time difference and uh, so that, that was I, I was so nervous that I missed the interview by accident and so uh, they were actually very nice to reschedule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Then here they said, thank you for the answer, Casey. You're welcome. And I can say that in my case for creative media production, I had to write a motivational letter along with my application. True. Me too. True. Yeah. So it's basically, I think it's, you know, why you want to study this specific program. Like what are your like future goals? Why you want to study at Prague College? So the, there was like motivational letter. And then after they read your motivational letter, they set up the interview with you. The other question says, do you get work experience? Yes. We all have work experience, but not from school, I guess. Nicholas, do you want to talk about that? <laughs> like, uh, I started to work since even before I started day one in university <laughs> because uh, I needed I needed the money. <laughs> and so I, I've done a, a lot of jobs here uh, in Czech Republic. Uh, one, because uh, it was easy since I have the dual citizenship. So I, I am legally allowed to work here uh, part time or full time. So I w- I've been working as a waiter for a la- the whole uh, last year. I worked as a tour guide for Spanish people. I worked as a pub crawl guide, and then uh, through one of Prague College uh, career, wh- what is it called? The event career. The career fair. Career board. Yeah, career fair. Fair. yeah. Yeah, I got I got a, a an you can call it an actual job in an office uh, in a recruitment. Uh, I was there for like eight months, and I just switched to a full time job uh, this year, and that's why I switched to part time studies. For me, since I, um, since I'm, my visa is, because that's another thing. If you are a foreigner and don't have a dual citizenship like Nicholas, you're not legally allowed to work in the Czech Republic. So it's sometimes that can be a little hard for people, mostly because most students do need the work to work for the money. But what I did was I got a trade license, which does take some process um you could do it on your own but i just hired a company to do it for me because i do not want to deal with czech government anymore uh, because it is quite difficult in my experience so um i got somebody to get me the trade license and now i'm able to work with that and like you know legally give invoices to my clients because i wasn't expecting to become a freelancer it was just just something that happened so i couldn't I was like, I, I can't do this because I'm I'm not legally working here. Don't tell anybody. But <laughs> anyways, um, so I have a trade license now. <laughs> yeah, I'm only doing freelance. <laughs> nice. Let's see. Um, Veronica says, oh, God, I got out of it. One second. I'm applying for a graphic design course. I heard that you spend most of the time with a laptop if you are a, why does it keep coming off? Um, a laptop if you're a graphic designer. Is it exhausting to spend so much time in front of a screen? Yeah, I would say that you have to spend a lot of time in a laptop, you no matter a... what your uh, degree is, because everything you do, it's in the laptop. So uh, you will actually spend a lot of time in, in, in your computer, uh, no matter which uh, degree you take. That's true. In yeah. my case, yes, you spend practically all your waking hours on the computer um because from in my experience like I do all my sketching I do all my idealizations and brainstorming and mind mapping on my computer because I don't like to use pencils Uh, but there are people that do like to draw and like do all the you know stuff (laughs) but in my case I'm very digital so I'm I love to be on the computer it's very hard on my eyes that's why I have like blue canceling blue light canceling glasses because it helps a little bit um but for example to just to give an example of this weekend we were working on this magazine project which is a lot and we were at Bishop's Court which is the second campus from one to nine the whole evening 
Then I came home, finished working on that till two in the morning. And then I went, I woke up and from nine to nine was on my computer working on the magazine. So yeah, that's, that's a lot. But again, as Nicholas says, it, it is every job that you have that I think you're, yeah. you're open to. Yeah, in my case, I'm editing a lot. It's... In Casey's case. Yeah, in my <laughs> case, edit. if you're in creative media production, you will probably spend a lot of time editing. I can imagine. Let's see. Oh, these comments keep coming up. So, um, all right. Do, can any of you guys get into the Facebook? Because maybe mine is just not working. I, I, have, I have it open, uh, the other okay. general ones. Uh, there is one actually that uh, might be important. Did you find it easy to meet other people slash sell in? Oh, yeah. This question was about, there we are. <laughs> Thank you for, um, the question is, which school has the most students, School of Media, Business, and Art? And do the students usually just stay in the, it, with the people in their own programs? Well, okay. I, I think the art school has the most people. You're like the biggest program, guys, no? We have fine arts and graphic design and all the masters. I think but graphic then, design is like the biggest. But our classes are like 10 people. Yeah, yeah. mine was. <laughs> Creative media production is definitely the smallest. Yeah, probably. So I don't know between business, because business classes are bigger than ours yeah but then i don't know how that works we'll have to ask yeah and um, then students usually just stay with people in their own programs well i've seen that actually sometimes yes but it depends on on you i i was going out i think in in our group of friends there was one from each program so i'm so. friends with these two so like <laughs> huh? you know we're not i don't i think that everybody kind of mixes a lot mostly yeah. because the school is small that you know if you just see somebody at the like the student lounge and you just start talking with them and yeah. you like you know i feel um, like everyone just knows everyone at yeah, some point to be honest and if you hang out in the student lounge yeah i don't know how it will be with like the digital campus if people get to know each other i think that's something that rise really pushing because i don't know how how it would be like coming in into the digital campus but yeah. in the real campus everybody knows each other yeah, at least we've seen each other. <laughs> Since I switched to online, when I started doing part time, I haven't met anyone. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh so, yeah, I think but you have a job. <laughs> you have friends in your job. <laughs> yeah, there's another one there. What are the main differences between graphic design and fine art experimental media? Anything that may help with me in choosing between them? I I I believe that the difference is the courses you take my friends in and what you want to specialize in my friends in fine art they most of the time are doing either sculptures or big like scale paintings they have okay I, I, we're not allowed to get into the modules but like i know that they've had uh live painting sessions and stuff like that i've never had any painting session at all um okay maybe we'll clear it up our courses are changing. So the courses that I took are completely different than the ones new people might come. So um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> but um, from what I know, fine art is more drawing and painting and us were more digital and everything else. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, should, are there more questions? I don't know. There was a question about settling in, yeah. something like this. If yeah. it was hard for you guys to meet people or or settle in, uh, for me, it was not because you usually have your class. And if you start in first year, then you have like, I don't know, five other people there in your same class that all, also don't know anyone. So you can just be friends with them. Or in Welcome Week, you also get to meet all the new people which don't have friends as well. <laughs> so you can be friends with them. Uh, I have to say that uh, it was a bit hard to make friends with locals, but I mean, if you have if you have your circle around uh, people in the uni, uh, that's also fine. 
But I think it's always important to have local friends and like actually go out of your way to do that. There are a lot of checks in in Prague College. Um, in my class, I have only one though, <laughs> but or one and a half kind of. Um, but they're cut. They're they're there. They're not that many, and they're in Prague College because they want to have the that international atmosphere. So they're not going to speak to you in Czech. And the Czech friends that I've made are friends from the gym or friends from work or friends, you know, from everywhere else, but not from school. So I have had to, you know, get go out of my way to find Czech friends. Yeah. In my case, settling in was really easy because before my first semester started, uh, Pro College had welcome week and we had like something like taking care of business day where, remember, Adri, you were there. Like we got all together and you took us like to the bank, to the transport card place and like to the like Vodafone and we got our bank account set up. We got our like phone numbers set up, our transportation card. So that was really nice and easy because, you know, we were there all together and that was great. And something yeah. funny is that Casey actually messaged me way before she came to Prague College. She was one of those that Instagrammed me and now we're friends. So it's so yeah, fun. I Instagrammed you like a year before I came. Yeah, I remember. It was because of the, the takeover that I did. Probably, and then, yeah. Um, yeah, and then now we, we even work together on a project, which is really cool. Yeah. Adri is the most senior of us here. <laughs> yes, I have been here for a long yeah. time. So yeah, and meeting new people, I think in Prague in general, it's quite easy. Like when you go to different events, especially like art events, like art galleries. So if you go to like short film festivals, like parties, whatever, there are so many people everywhere. There are so many like local people and international people. And everyone is usually super open to meeting new people. So yeah. All right, another question is, uh, from a Costa Rican, actually, hola. <laughs> um, she says that she's already in Prague and that she is a freelance designer, but she wants to um, have, she doesn't have a degree in that. Um, and she's like, you guys are all very young. Are there any older students taking classes in BA? And it, again, it depends on your classes because classes are very small. But in my class, for example, when we came in, there were people from all ages. I remember our youngest was like, I think he was 16 when he came in. And our oldest was like 20, 25, I think. So there is a big difference between them. And then there's like everybody else in the middle that, you know, we're kind of in our 20s. So for BA, I think um, it really like, it depends on the class that you have. I know a lot of people actually came into foundation year and um, and they, they've already had like their degrees and they already have like their careers in something else. And then they decided to do foundation and now they're artists, you know? So like, it, again, it really depends. Um, I was talking with my friend, she just turned 26 and she was like, yeah, you know, it, I'm at my pace. You guys are in your pace. Um, we all have completely different lives. And I think that everybody is so understanding and, and we just work really well as groups because we are very, like small classes, which is really awesome because you get to meet everybody. Um, so even if you're the oldest, I think you'll yeah. you'll enjoy it. <laughs> in my class, for example, in BA Creative Media Production, I have people who are like 28, 26, 24, 20, 18. So there is like all range of ages. And I know like people from business who are like in BA and they're like also 26. For example, I know people from foundation who are also like 20, around 25. So it's it really depends on the class. Yeah. Cool. Do we have any other questions? I have one here. It says, how many years are the bachelor programs? <laughs> oh, so that was All of them are three, I believe, which yeah. is so much better than American schools. Sorry. It's four, <laughs> Yeah. I'm biased. <laughs> I've been in British schools my whole life. Oh, there is a cool question. <laughs> Do you have many exams? Do you guys have many exams? <laughs> Actually, I would say we don't have many. Uh, like... I've never done an exam in same, university. Same, same, same. <laughs> I, I did, I did. In business, uh, we do. Like, I think the, the, uh, 
a gra graphic design and and then art, fine arts and so on. They have more mostly projects, uh, which we do also in um, business. We mostly have like uh, use cases and reports or or essays. But then sometimes we've had some uh, tests, but uh, that's because we have some accreditation from ACCA and CIMA certifications. These are some international professional certifications so that uh, we have to take tests so that we can get accredited for those uh, certifications. <laughs> yeah, any other comment? Uh, I Most of my, like all of my classes have been project-based. I've never done an exam before. And the cool thing also is that it's not only projects that you're doing in class and like they're, you know, just, uh, what do you call this? Um, Im image, Im Im imagine projects? I don't know, uh, but they're actual projects that you're working on. And for example, for last year, we did a course in a uh, in an office uh, with the designers in that office. So it was pretty cool to actually have that experience. Um, but yeah, it's all project based. Yeah, same for creative media production. I've never done an exam. <laughs> we do oh, like we work yeah. on projects. Like it can be like a short film documentary project, like reportage, something like this. And then we present it. Or we also have like some, we have, we do sometimes some reports, some essays, but the main projects are always like the actual like projects that you go out and film and then you present it. I think that now that we said there are no tests, there are going to be at least five applications. Uh, new applications. Absolutely. <laughs> but um the point of presenting is is really important because i personally speak a lot and so i'm really good with presentations but a lot of my classmates struggle with that so like seeing their progression from their first ever presentation to now is insane like being able to see how eloquent they are and how they you know how they're able to express themselves and their presentation skills have gone super super well which i believe that's a way better skill to have than being able to take exams because in real life, you are going to have to present proposals and stuff to your clients and to your yeah. boss instead of, here's some big deals. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was so not scared, but yeah, I was scared when I just started pro at Pro College. And I remember in like first day of the welcome week, Adri said, she was like, guys, be prepared. You will have to present a lot. <laughs> you know, like you will have to present like almost like every week just be prepared for that and I was so scared because I've never like in my high school we did not do a lot of presentations and especially I've never done a presentation in English so I was really anxious and really scared my like in my first presentation I was so nervous but then you know you do the more you do it the more you get used to it and then like now I'm so comfortable. Now I actually enjoy presenting because I'm presenting usually like my own works or something that I really like. And it's such a great skill to have. Awesome. Another question says, uh, do I have to have some experience for the creative media production or will I learn everything in class? Uh, no, not really. Like in my class, we have most people had zero experience in like media or filmmaking. Uh, when we started so no not really it's uh, it can be helpful if you have some basic understanding of like how to use a DSLR at least because uh, it might be helpful for the very 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 first small project but mostly no like you will learn everything at school like I think yeah like no one in my class had any previous experience and we learned everything at school so not really and the other question is, any material recommendations for people planning on taking graphic design? Um, the only thing that you will be required are the Adobe programs, which you can actually get them on a student discount if you use your student uh, email. So instead of paying like 60 euros, you pay 20, which is way better than, than paying full price. A lot of people do have the cracked versions, but obviously we don't uh, talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> and then um, in my case, 
well, you know, everybody says that, oh, to be a graphic designer, you need a MacBook. No, no, um, you don't need a MacBook. You just need a computer that works. I believe that I'm not sponsored by, but I believe the Lenovo's are really good um, to, to carry the programs. They're very strong. Um, mostly if you have like those big gaming computers, those are great, but uh, I don't have one. I have a touchscreen laptop, which is great when I have to do my sketches and my brainstorming. And if I want to take notes that actually look like handwritten, or if I just actually want to do an illustration that I want to draw, which has been really helpful. So the Lenovo Yoga is a really good computer to get. I've recommended it to a lot of people that have asked me that question on Instagram. Uh, drawing tablets are also a great option. I've used them before, but you know, just right, like my mind does not connect me drawing here and the image there. So it's just, it doesn't work for me. Um, it's, it's too weird. Um, but a lot of people do like drawing tablets. It really depends. And art materials, graphic designers, we don't really use art materials. If you do find art, then you do use a lot of them, but we don't. Um, but yeah, that is, that's my answer. And those are all the questions we have, but how many more do we need to answer from the ones that were sent? We have a lot, don't we? Yeah, there are many more uh, general questions that we were like prepared before. There is one that says, um, why did you choose Prague College? Mm -hmm. hmm. I remember I really wanted to do something with film. And I was looking at schools like literally everywhere, like everywhere in Europe, in the States. I didn't even care like which country to go to. I just wanted to study something with film. But as you might know, film schools are crazy expensive. Like it's insane. And in most film schools, you need to have a portfolio just to get in. So you need to have like a short film or something like this to get in. And I was in my like, small hometown completely alone I didn't have like any friends who knew anything about film I did not know anything about it I I had zero equipment like I didn't even have a DSLR so I could not do that obviously and I could not afford to pay for like super expensive film schools and then I found and I was not sure if I want to do like only film exactly and then I found creative media production at Prague College and I just read the description and I saw like the video and I was like, oh my God, that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> and yeah, that's my story. Nicholas, how about you? Yeah. My case was that I was actively looking for a, a university in Prague uh, or in the Czech Republic, where, but better Prague. And uh, there were things that I contacted many universities and some of them were like not helpful uh, at all. Like uh, their admissions team were like e either not responding or just saying things like, yeah, go in the web and find out. And it, that was quite difficult. And then in some cases they wouldn't even want to recognize my education from Bolivia because it was not a European education. And they said that I needed to take one more year from university before I could just start university here. And so I didn't like that idea at all. Um, then I found Prague College and uh, their admissions team was, was very nice, very helpful. Uh, they answered to all my crazy questions. And uh, even when I didn't know any particular case or how to do something, they would just like uh, give me options or, or assist me. So it was really smooth uh, and uh, I'm, I'm quite happy I made the choice, honestly. Same. I, the question was why we chose Park College? Yeah. I was looking, I wanted to be an architect, first of all. And so I was looking into um, schools in Europe. Just, I knew I wanted to come to Europe. I didn't want to go back to Costa Rica. <laughs> so I, I was just searching for architecture schools and I found one here in Prague. And because of, you know, Facebook knowing everything, uh, one of their ads popped up, one of Park College ads. And I just clicked on it because it was in Prague and then I realized they didn't have architecture. So I, you know, kind of put it in the back row. But then when I came back to my senses and I was like, I don't want to be an architect anymore. Um, and I want to be a graphic designer. I remembered Prague College had this course. And so I, I had two options. One was in Italy, one was in Prague. And I was like, I'm going to apply at the same time. The people that respond first, that's where I'm going. And 
Frog College answered first. It was it was meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. And what's the next question? Do you yeah, have any... I have uh, one of the last ones from from my list, and it says, "Could you please tell us a little bit more about a about a project that you have worked on and you have liked in particular?" In school. Yeah. Or else? Yeah. Where else? I know. <laughs> okay, mm. Casey, do you have one? Yeah, last semester actually, it was it was in the lockdown. <laughs> I was I was working on a short documentary. And like first we had to choose the topics that we want to do the like interview based documentary about. And I chose something like music and DJing because I was like, oh yeah, it'll look cool. <laughs> and then actually I, I told my teacher about that and it turned out that he knows a very like quite famous audiovisual artist here who is also like famous in UK and Germany. And he was like, yeah, he's my friend. I'll get you in touch with him. So he got me in touch with him. And uh, yeah, I made a documentary about that guy. And it was amazing. Like, it was so fun. It was hard and fun working with him. And it was definitely my favorite project. It was really, it was extremely challenging because it was in the lockdown. And, uh, you know, plans were changing, like there were difficulties with the equipment, with the filming, with like locations and everything. I was going crazy, but I managed it and it was it was really fun and I'm proud of this project. Like at the end, I made it was like 11 minutes short documentary. Nice. And yeah, that was really fun. For me... I I love the most of the school projects I've done. Uh, some of them were too influenced by my teachers that I, I ended up not liking them. But one of my favorite ones is I don't know if I can show it like this. If you can see it, there we go. It's um, a redesign of a photography book, and so wow, it looks so cool. Yeah, so I actually um, it was an old. Let me see if I can get. This is in my portfolio, so if anybody wants to check it out, it's in my portfolio. Um, you can't see it, though. Anyways, I'm not going to share my screen. The thing was, we would get a really, really old book. This was a book published in 1977, and it had no real graphic design because it was a time where, you know, it was just layouts. And, um, and we would get to redesign it. So I started from scratch, and then I took the whole progress and um was able to print it out and so I have the book there and it's like so cool <laughs> so seeing like you know my ideas come to life that's the moment that I was like I want to do this for the rest of my life well okay so business it's not as, as exciting as <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if I can think of my projects there was a uh, one the one that I actually liked because you know uh business tends not to be so creative as uh, graphic design and, and art. So we don't get to actually do uh, redesign anything or, or build something. But uh, there was one uh, research in project management. That I remember that in which we had to do actual research and we had to conduct some surveys to people. We had to do analytics with these uh, results and then uh, create some some hypotheses from the data and back it up with more data. So that, that was quite interesting. And that's quite uh, accurate to what people actually do when, when they work. So uh, that, that was quite exciting, like to do the, the surveys uh, and then doing the analytics. That was uh, something that I, I did enjoy. All right. Actually, we, where we differ. <laughs> I don't like the survey part <laughs> or the analytics. <laughs> okay all right so we're i think we're 455 so maybe we should uh... we have two more questions how should a portfolio for graphic design look like it really depends on your taste and on what you want if you have any idea of what you want to focus on for example, I knew that I wanted to do kind of like branding and visual identity. So I did a lot of that. And I just did like a PDF of like 
the size of my computer and then I would just put the approach like the project and maybe a little bit of the progress but most of it it was just the final pro like the final project and visuals so that people would see like my skills and then the other question is how should a portfolio for fine arts look I'm not sure about the requirements of the fine arts for us the requirements were just like I think it was 17 to 20 pieces of visuals um, but I'm guessing it's similar. So I'm, I guess it has to do with the paintings and the drawings and the videos that you've made um, for fine art. But yeah, it depends on your, your thing. If you have any other questions about portfolios for graphic design, then you can message me on Instagram. But yeah, all right. What were you gonna say, Nicholas? So should yeah, we close? I think, uh, maybe we should start closing. Uh, or, or is there any final questions so that that you can find anywhere? I think that was it. All right, so maybe we can start closing. Thank you everyone for uh, watching us. I don't know how many people there are watching us uh, right now. There's 25 right now. Oh, wow. Most of yours <laughs> are right in my life. <laughs> well, um, I'm sure that this video will be uh, stored there in, in Prague College Facebook post. So, uh, if you have any question, then don't hesitate to to uh, ask admissions, or maybe you can contact one of us. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I would be very happy to answer any question because uh, it looks like everyone here was more towards design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, that's it from us, right? Yeah. Thank you guys so much for uh, taking over with me. Uh, and thank you for the uh, people behind cameras that <laughs> helped put this together, um, like Vicky and Alexa and Rai and everybody else. So thank you. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, that's it for us. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Right, should, should right close. I don't know. I think we have to leave the, the thing. <laughs> this is so weird. Yeah, should we just leave? I think so. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, good job, guys. You can just close when you're done. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you, guys.